Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Suna and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we're taking a look at The Magnificent which is a new game from Apora Games and designers Christian Ösby and Eilif Svensson so let's go down to the table and see how it plays The Magnificent is played over three rounds and each round each player is going to have four turns on my turn I'm going to pick one of the dice that has rolled in the beginning of the game I'm going to have in front of me four of these master cards which shows a bonus and a way to score points. I'm going to pick up a die, let's say I take this five purple die and put it here and I will get the bonus on the card. Then I'm going to assess how much power I have. So let's say I already had one of these, let's say I have a number four here on purple. I will add the purple dice together, so that's a nine. I can then use special effect gems. To boost it two more so I can use purple gems when I'm boosting this purple dice. This will be 9 and 11 if I use this. So now I have a power of 11. I can then choose to do one of three actions. The first action is to travel. And you travel along these parts here. And I, I, since I used purple, I will have to travel with this purple wagon. I will travel up to 11 spaces. I will collect all the gems that I pass. And if I land on a tent, I will collect that and place it on my player mat. The second action I can take is to build, and I will then look at my player mat here, which has my camp. All of these spaces here is where I can build my camp of these Tetris-like pieces. And the power I have, it matters how many pieces I can build. And big and small pieces, it's one of each in each color. So I can build then purple pieces when I have the purple dice. There are ways to mitigate that, but uh, I'm not going to go into all the rules on how to do that. When you build, you're going to get bonuses as well and fill out your camp space. And the reason you want to do this is the last action, which is perform. To perform, you need these posters, which you will get different ways in the game. And you also need tents to perform them in. So you need to pair a tent with a poster on your player board like this. And when you perform, you're going to move your performer hat to the space where it shows how much power you had. So let's say I had a power of six. I will move here and this space tells me I can complete one poster. So let's take this poster as an example. Uh, let's say it's up here. That means this poster says I need to have two small purple tiles in my camp. So if I had that now, I would be able to complete this. This would score me two points and two coins and also this tent which it's under would score me two points. If I had more or um, possibility to post score more posters, I would be able to do that to score more points. After everybody has done four actions, you are gonna do the end of round and uh, end of round game and the round stuff. End of round stuff, I'm gonna call it that. The end of the round things. Which is like this. You're gonna pay for your dice. So with, this is really cool because you have, let's say I have picked these different dice. So I have a five in green, a four in, in orange, and then I have nine in purple. Now this means I will have to pay nine because that's the highest among the colors. Let's say I even used one of these clear dice, which is a joker. Then I had to add that as well. So here I have to pay nine, 10, 11, 12 coins. If I can't pay that, I'm gonna lose points and the amount of points depends on the round you're in. After that, everybody's gonna get a new card, depending on how well they did on this track. And after that, you're gonna score one of your cards, because all of these cards, as I said, had a bonus and a way to score. So you're gonna score one of them, getting a different amount of points, up to around 20. And then you are gonna play two more rounds. At the end of the game, you are gonna score. Once again, you're gonna score one at the end of the round. You're gonna score the rest of the four cards you will have in front of you. You're gonna score half the points for them. And then you are gonna score Four points for each of these areas that you have completed. You can use gems to fill in the spaces that you haven't completed. At the end of that, the player with the most points is the winner of The Magnificent. As always, let's start with the artwork and components. But first, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, we would be super happy, happy like this. Yay! Big smiles happy if you did that right now. Click the subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. Yes. With that promotion thing out of the way, let's talk about artwork and components. Do you want to start? Yes, I like this theme. It's quite different from the last game they made. Yeah, the Santa Maria game. The artwork, yeah, it's yes. different. Yeah, absolutely. And I like it. I like the style. I like the mm -hmm. alternative circus theme. Yes. And also, the, it pops on the board. Mm -hmm. it, it looks quite dark, but it has like this popping colors that mm -hmm. brings it to life. I like that. Yeah, I, I love it. The artwork is, is magnificent. Oh. Boom! Oh. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually plan that. I, I'm just, I'm just that clever. <laughs> so yes. yeah, uh, I actually love it. I think it's, uh, it's really beautiful. It's, it fits the theme. Um, we, we 
which isn't there, but that's okay. But it is uh, super. It's a Euro game, uh, but it, it it's super great. Like it, it, as you said, it looks beautiful. Really, nothing else to add. It's just like these uh, pieces. They are like simple tetraminos, but they do look really nice with yeah. the they're yellow. No, I'm, they're not yellow. They're purple, green, and red, which is just looks great which together. Which is not yellow. <laughs> which is not yellow. I don't know colors. Which isn't what I. That's not what I do. I don't review colors. I review board games. Yeah, there's not much else to say about it. But it, the artwork, it looks, no, the, it looks beautiful. And the components are good. The art, the cards are a bit thin, but they are really nice. I think you basically almost you're gonna shuffle them a bit. Uh, but if you are like gonna play this a lot yeah. of times, so you should just leave it. And I don't mind this at all. No, I don't. I, I don't like care. it actually. The thin player boards. It's just gonna sit there. I know this is gonna be my ongoing rant for 10 years. I'm gonna be an old grumpy guy being like, it's only gonna sit on the table. You don't need 16 centimeters of a player board. It's gonna be here on the table. Yeah, and, and it doesn't stuff on warp. It. No, it doesn't. That's a great thing about yes. this. So, so love it. And it looks good. It's, as you said, it's dark. It's a dark little theme, but uh, a dark, dark art style. Mm. And I love this. It's not the best component tray, but it's just perfect. Like this should be in all games, which has a lot of resources. It's so easy to put away, it's so easy to play. Like it's cards, some tokens, and then this. You just open it up. Yeah. This would have been so much more complicated. Yeah, there's almost like no setup at all. No, it's really, really yeah. short setup time. Uh, which is something we maybe should add to reviews. Yeah. Setup time. Do you want <laughs> setup times in reviews? Let us know. This is how we are rolling. We just ramble along on camera and then we see what happens. Okay, so play time. No, it's ESO learning from the oh, rules. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, let's let's do it in order. ESO playing from the rules. It's learning from the rules. Playing from the rules is something different. Uh, this <laughs> is um, I don't know how many pages there are uh, because they forgot to print the page numbers, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a super concise rule book. It's just two pages of setup, and then you have two, four pages of gameplay. Little bit of solo mode and a reference on the back, and that's it. And the game is super simple, rules like uh, rules uh, rules wise. It's just yeah, it's really really simple. So not a lot to not having a rule book. Like there's not a lot of these uh, small rules. So there's it's, uh, almost like nothing. We have gone back to the rule no. book to check for. No, it's super clear. Mm. Uh, I read it once, and you understand the game. So it's yeah. it's super duper clear. Nice. So that is is of learning from the rule book. Yes. So what now do we do now? Time. Let's do play time on player account. <laughs> that's that's great. Yes. So we have played this at uh two three four yeah players. Wait, all player accounts yes. two three and four players. What do you think? I think it's good. It's quite um, interesting the changes from two players to four players, mm -hmm. and I I think I like it best the tree because you get the bow best from both worlds. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take like uh, the longest time. It it takes it ha it has some AP problems because it has it's a lot of thing to think about, and yeah. you have a few actions. So it's if few you actions screw, that you have to plan, if you yeah. screw, screw up, you yeah you need to you need to think and. If you grab a die, for example, that someone else needs, mm -hmm. they are going to take a longer time thinking. So I like it best a tree because you get more interaction mm -hmm. and I like that, but it doesn't drag that it could do with four players. I think maybe like if I don't play this a lot, I think I would like to play it most with four. Yeah. Like because oh. you could get the timing a bit down because it is a bit long. It took us two and a half hours almost to something around that two and a half hours with four players. One hour and 30 minutes with two players. We play that twice at about the same time. Three and four players only played once, so that's, of course, going to go down. But when we played four, it was three players who already played it one and two, uh, one and three times. So it mm. was uh, only one player who hadn't played it before. So it, And it still took about over two hours, which was a bit too long for me. Uh, but most of the time I have time to think about, a lot of mm. things to think about, to be able to sit and think about my turns, because there are... So you, as you said, you you have so few actions, so you have to plan them really ahead. Yeah. And with four players, there is the most. It's really tight. Yeah. So if you don't like interactions, you you can play it with two. But if you like interaction, like somebody's gonna take that dice you want, and especially the performer track. That's where it's super yeah, that tight. Would, that got really interesting with yes. four players. I did not see that coming because with two players, it was like it was no uh, rush with performing because mm -hmm. you would probably get. Uh, to perform as many times and as many postures that you need to mm -hmm. but with four players it wasn't even sure that you were going to get to perform uh, you could it do like tighter, two yeah. or one posture yeah mm -hmm. that was really interesting yeah really but i enjoyed the all player counts 
I do think maybe as you said it's best at three because you get that both the interaction and also it's a bit shorter, not so much downtime between turns. But I think like if you play this, like most games, if you play it four player, new players, it's gonna take a while. Yeah. But if you play it again a couple of times, it's gonna go quicker because you will have easier. The times are gonna stop is when somebody's taking the action you really needed, mm. and you would have to think, okay, I have no idea what I'm gonna do now. That's gonna take some time. But that's mm. the case with all games. So I think this is a pretty a pretty decent length of the time for the mm -hmm. game and it's yeah. gonna go down if you play it a lot more with the same players yeah. or with the same player count mm -hmm. so I think that's good yeah cool. complexity yes it's not a very complex game like rules wise no. it's pretty simple you only have three actions to yes. think about mm -hmm. but how, when you're going to do what and with it, yeah what order and like seeing what others are trying to do what mm -hmm. dice they need like so you get what you want that the thinking and like doing that good, uh, I don't know. It, I don't feel like it's that complex though. No, but, like but it's the, really interesting. It's a medium game. Like the complexity here comes not from the rules because to say it's three actions. The complexity comes from the planning mm. and the resource management, having enough money, having the special effects, the gems that you need, mm. and and just getting all the buildings built so you can do the posters and get new posters and all that you have to do in just four actions yeah. so it is it's really tight it feels like every action counts yes it feels so horrible when you sometimes you have to take like a, a three dice just to move three on the travel to get two gems and, and a tent like that yeah. feels like a super ungood action ungood that's not um, a word but it, it feels not it a word. feels really <laughs> It feels like everything matters. Like you yeah. really need to plan out what you're gonna do, and sometimes people are gonna screw you over, and sometimes you can't be too greedy because, especially with more players, mm. you're gonna be like, "But I can't do that one more action and build that, and I'm gonna do even more posters." But then it comes to you again. Everybody has performed, and you cannot get up on that track to to do the performances that you need. Um, it's super That's interesting cool. with the um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're gonna talk about the basic and advanced version. Let's do that in the gameplay, uh, which is coming now. Yeah. So medium, it's yeah. a medium game. Yeah. Yeah, like in right in the middle of medium. So gameplay fun factor. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's very fun. That that's a nice thing to say. It's a fun <laughs> game. It is. And I like it. I like the puzzle of it. I yeah. I like. I I feel like I'm saying this about a lot of games <laughs> lately. But this. But we like puzzle games. Like we yeah. like puzzle Euro games. So of course we're gonna like the puzzle of. And this is an actual puzzle. Yeah, I like puzzling with like to fill up these uh, squares and mm -hmm. also getting the bonuses mm -hmm. and also figuring out oh this fits there but I really need a red tile to do this poster. Uh, I, it, this works with my brain. It's fun and to play. It does because you won almost every time you played except I actually ended up winning. You won last Woo time. Up. I never thought it would happen because you were so good in this game. But yeah, I, I, I really like it. I think there are... I think what they have done here, which makes it so good for me, is that they have taken a lot of mechanisms I like and mashed them together and it, it works really well. Uh, it has simple rules, but it's still fun decisions as we already talked mm -hmm. about. I love the, the double cards as the bonus and then a scoring mechanism. I love games where you build your own scoring, where you actually decide what you will get mm -hmm. points for. Yeah. Some things everybody's going to get points for, but I love making my own way of getting points. Mm. Like this, for example, in Nippon, which is one of my favorite games with that kind of mechanism, mm. where you will build your own scoring during the game, and I love that here as well. And dice drafting is always fun. Mm. I like the thing they did now with um, with the color, so that you have you have to pay for the color you use the most of, and yes. also the joker color, the, yeah, the, like the fair one. I really love that, because you, you want to do the powerful actions, but the more powerful actions you're going to do, the more you're going to have to get coins. Yes. Whereas you're going to lose lots of points at the end of the game. Yeah, I like that as well. I also like the... Um, and I forgot what to say. It's totally slipped my mind. But you... Yeah. Um, the the little uh, special ability that you get mm -hmm. to um, put your trainers on. Yeah. And also combined with the different scoring each time. Mm -hmm. It makes... It, changes up the way you play the game and you feel like you're playing a unique game for you because everyone's mm -hmm. doing yeah. different strategies uh, to combine with their special power and their uh, scoring so I mm -hmm. like that so yeah that is it's really really good so um some things like that might be not good or not not good but things that might look not so cool uh, there's only three actions in the game mm. so everybody's gonna do kind of the same thing 
So it is, and even though you are doing your own scoring mm. and you have your own special abilities, it is going to be like an optimization puzzle. Yes. Because there is, you have to do all the different actions. You cannot perform if you don't build, and you cannot perform if you don't have more tents, and you mm. get tents by traveling. So those are the three actions you can do, and you have to do all of them. Yeah, so, you're really struggling to get money to pay for the things you want to do if you don't perform. And so, then you won't yeah. get points, because yep. you get lots of points for performing. So, so you have to do everything. It's not like I'm going to focus on this action. You have to do all of them. So there's three actions and you have four actions in a round with three rounds. You can do 12 things. So it all comes down to trying to optimize the, 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 the dice that's out there, optimize the order of the actions you're doing, optimize uh, like when you see there are some good contracts for you or posters, you will try to get those. And uh, there's a lot of things going on, but I... I I'm, yeah, so so it's this is almost into replayability wise, but it's yeah. um, uh, there is like yeah, it, it is like the strategy is to build, get posters and perform. Yeah, I think uh, especially maybe in two players where there doesn't happen a lot of stuff other than the stuff you do yourself, mm -hmm. it could feel kind of more static than with three or four players. That mm -hmm. that would be more. Um, yeah, more fun in the if you're playing it a lot. Mm, yeah, mm. I would say so. And also, um, like it is mostly multiplayer solitaire, except for like the drafting and the dice. Like it almost most of what you do are for yourself. Nobody mm. can destroy what you're doing in that kind of way. So it's it's kind of like feels like a worker placement kind of blocking. Yeah. Like the drafting is is of course a normal drafting blocking, and the performance track feels kind of like worker placement blocking. Mm. Somebody got there, and you can't take that space. Mm. Uh, and of course, somebody can get lucky. Uh, especially the posters that's kind of the only thing where there's yeah. luck involved or if, of course with rolling on the dice and that but mm. that's the same for everybody in the posters like if you take a poster and you draw a blind and you draw three good ones for you that you already can't yeah. fulfill and i will draw three ones that i can't fulfill and uh, it doesn't ha i haven't felt like that had swing the game but that's kind of no, the only but that's the only like place where i felt like oh here i got lucky mm -hmm. or here i got unlucky that's yeah. the only only thing i think Absolutely. So, anything else you want to add for gameplay? Mm, no. It's a really good. good game. Yeah. yeah. So replayability. Mm. I all yeah. I spoke you a bit about touched. it, but you can you can you can search. Uh, I'm I'm quite unsure about this because mm -hmm. I I like the optimization puzzle mm -hmm. that much that I I think there is plenty of re replayability there for me, uh, but I think I I would prefer it at the three players because it happens mm -hmm. more. I think it's not that replayable with two players. That's like my first impression of it mm -hmm. at least. What do you think? Uh, yeah, so first of all, let's talk about the basic and advanced versions of yeah. the game just quickly. In basic, you will get the A side of these player boards, which have the same starting resources and you will get a, a set of cards. So the uh, master cards which you use for bonuses and scoring. We did that once, but after that we only played the advanced version, which I will suggest if you yeah. are used to playing board games, you, you can just jump straight to it if you want to. Yeah. But if you are like me, I like to play the suggested way the first time just to get into it and, and enjoy it more the first time. Not have mm. to think about decisions that's going to be hard to, de to decide on the first time. Mm. So the advanced version you will get a B side which has a different uh, starting uh, bonuses. And you're also going to draft the card, which mm. makes uh, the replayability higher. Yeah. Because you're kind of building your own scoring from the beginning. Yeah. I you like will not that. just, you can, oh, I can get lucky and get two of the same. So you can score those two times after each other. Mm. Or you can get a lot of things that combo as well together, both the bonuses and the scorings. Mm. And I really like that. So yeah. the advanced version is really the only way I would play this game. And, and which is upping the replayability. Yeah, but, I agree. That's cool. But since there's really... It feels like there's kind of nuances to a strategy, mm -hmm. but there is really the strategy is to build up, yes. travel, perform. Not particularly in that order, but that's kind of the thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I am unsure like if I play this, but I, we have played it uh, four times now, mm -hmm. and I still would like to play it again. Yeah. Like it's not like I'm, I'm I'm bored of it, but I think like if you are, it's so hard to talk about replayability when you play games four or five six times and then never have time to play them again like this is kind of one of the hardest things to talk about in the review mm. because we have to play the game 10 15 times but then again mostly nobody does mm. so so because mostly nobody does then it's okay to talk about it even if you had mm. only played it four or five six times so if everybody played games like 15 20 times and i would only play it four or five times reviewed and i, I wouldn't feel good talking about it and mm. um, i wouldn't like Let's say the normal amount of people play a game is six times. Mm. I don't think there's a problem playing this game six times. No. 
No, um, no, no. I don't know, but if there's going to be a, uh, an expansion, they did that for Santa Maria, and maybe they do it for this as well. If they do like a module base, which is in for Santa Maria, which I always love because we're going to add like small different things, mm. uh, which will add to the replayability. That's yeah. going to be cool. But let's say that comes out in two years, you will probably not play this more than six, seven, eight times before that, and I think it's good for that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think you will have lots of fun with it those times you play it. If this is one of your few games in your collection, I think you will be happy anyways because there's then you probably haven't played that much games. Yeah, and also... I'm it, judging people now. <laughs> <laughs> but some people just like to have few games. Yes. Uh, but I think like... This is also one of those games that you can get good at. So yes. you can, like, if, if you enjoy that aspect of games, like, if you don't need every game to be, like, super different, uh, then you can play this just to be good. Like, you can get really good, I think, at optimizing, finding out the best path, seeing the best opportunities and things yes. like that. Mm. So final thoughts. Yeah. You want to start? Yes. I really like this game. I think there is some interesting me mechanics here that I've, I want to get better at it mm -hmm. because uh, I see some optimizing here and there's still some like nuances to strategies that I still haven't tried out. So I think this is a, a seven and a half for me. Mm -hmm. Awesome! This is pretty good. Yeah, and this was one of my top 10 anticipated games for Essen. I uh, was so happy to be able to play it before and, and give it to you and show it to you. Um, I This was, I think, the 8th on my top 10 and I was not disappointed. I really, really enjoyed this and uh, it has a lot of the mechanisms I like, as I already said. Put together in this great little package, I'm going to give it an 8. Cool. It is a very, very good game. If something here Pick your interest, go and check it out. Uh, it's releasing at Essen Spiel, which is next week, so you can go and check it out there if you are there. Yay. Probably get a demo and uh, talk to some cool Norwegian people. Yes. So that's the end of the video. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. And I'm Sidwa. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings, and bye bye.